he opens that, sees the rifle, closes the case, and I see in his eyes the message. Oh, please God, not on my ship. <laughs> Only not on my ship. Hello you metal pilgrims and welcome to the new episode of our interview series uh, on MP2, our new channel. And today I'm more than happy to meet my country mate actually, uh, Vitaly out of uh, 1914. Vitaly, hey man, how's it going? Going good, thanks. How about you? Yeah, all is well, all is well. I mean, I guess no point of, you know, asking how you're doing in Ukraine, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it better than me. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I mean, it's going to be a little bit weird for us. I, I'll be honest with you, for anyone who's going to be watching us, since both of us, of course, speak Ukrainian, but uh, uh, for for the purposes of this interview, we'll, we'll switch to English, all of us. All right, uh, so Vitaly, first of all, congrats. Your latest studio album were, um, it is out for what? For for the, for a week already, where fear and weapons meet, right? It's been out for weeks on uh, on uh, on October twenty second. And uh, first of all, congrats on finishing it up. I I of course was able to listen to it already. Now I gotta say that I absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. I think you guys outdid yourself on uh, on this one. Um, so can you just tell us briefly a little bit about the creative process behind it? When you started writing it, you know, and how did all of this form into this one piece? Uh, thanks again for the warm words. Um, unlikely, on the previous album when we had enough time to uh, tour and play the songs live and polish them. Uh, this year was uh, like the, the previous year when we started uh, creating music. The 2020 was primarily spent in the lockdown mm -hmm. when you had to care about other things than creativity. So uh, it was pretty hard to get back into this. Yeah. Drive for for for, for music, um, but uh, uh, we actually had to record something, and we set to uh, record songs maybe end of November mm -hmm. 2020, and did everything in three months mm -hmm. during the winter. Yeah, and uh, this process was a little bit different uh, from the previous ones because uh, we just uh, created the song, the songs. Uh, we entered the studio right away, mm -hmm. recorded everything, so we didn't have a chance to test the songs live. Yes. Hopefully we'll have it in the future. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's pretty old-fashioned way, in a way, you know, the way, you know, you hear Judas Priest and Black Sabbath used to record albums in the 70s, you know, before playing anything live, going to the studio, locking themselves up for a couple of months and, uh, and writing those. And for 1914, how do you guys usually divide responsibilities? I mean, who is responsible for what when it comes to writing new music and lyrics and so on? Uh, the whole idea uh, and all the lyrics come from the singer mm -hmm. who digs the uh, great war topic most. Uh, he inspires us in that matter, I would say. So the idea and the lyrics come from him, and then we just sit all together and create mm -hmm. the music part. I can edit the lyrics a little bit, but uh, just in terms of positioning. And uh, he can also, like, since he writes all the lyrics, he can murmur some uh, verses, some riffs, or just give us a general line. For example, I need the song to be grim, I need the song to be fast, I need the song, I see the song faster than the previous one. And uh, yeah, so it's just a, it's a collaborative approach. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. It seems like a creative mechanism of you guys working together. And uh, is your music usually riff based in terms of writing or do you guys prefer writing on different instruments and then laying the guitar riffs on top of it and the rest of the instruments follow or do you write on guitar and then follow everything you know on uh, on top of it uh, riff based at the time it is good uh, we write everything on uh, on guitars this is just how it comes i have i have a pretty big uh, folder on my pc mm -hmm. with some guitar ideas that I uh, just uh, track them, track, 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 and then we review stuff, my stuff, uh, other people's stuff, we just combine things together. But uh, mostly writing on the guitars. Okay, 
Makes sense. Makes sense, man. I mean, obviously, this album is released through Napalm Records, and it's it's nothing new for you. And on one hand, on the other hand, did the label have any input or say as per you know how this album would turn out, or did you have your full complete you know uh, creative freedom? The uh, label never tells you what to do in terms of creativity, so uh, it's all on us. Pretty cool. And on this on this record, you also have collaborated with uh, Nick Holmes, who is actually one of the very first guests on uh, Metal Pilgrim show back back when was that a year and a half ago or two years ago, something like that. So how was it working with Nick? I assume you guys didn't get to, you know, work in a studio together and everything was done digitally, right? It was done remotely, yes. Uh, working with him was very easy because when you work with a professional, it's always easy. Yeah. So the, the person knows what to do and how to do it. Uh, so uh, we had an idea the first time in three albums to add a clean vocals to a song. Mm -hmm. Obviously, our singer's clean vocals didn't fit that song because he has like a very strong punk mm -hmm. background and it's a little, little, little bit different, mm -hmm. I'd say. So we were searching for someone who could do both clean and harsh at the same time. So since we are the fans of Paradise Lost, long time fans, it was the obvious choice, but it was pretty scary, you know, to message such a legendary band, such a legendary people. But so we just wrote an email. Uh, they liked the overall concept mm -hmm. because we send them like the lyrics, we send them the idea. Uh, the song is about the British soldier mm -hmm. as well. So uh, they liked the idea, requested the demo. Mm -hmm. Demo was recorded, sent out in a couple of days. Nick uh, messaged us, uh, guys, I like the song, I want to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, obviously, I think it's a great song and. Uh, I I am a Paradise Lost, and I have been for uh, since since I was a child, basically. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, it was it was great to see them perform, you know, uh, with the Ukrainian band. For me personally, of course. And you you basically started talking about this, and one of the questions that was submitted by one of the fans when I you know did a shout out that you'll be one of the bands who will be welcomed on the channel sometime soon is first of all, how did this concept? At the very first place of uh, you know the Great War and writing lyrics mostly about it, how did all of this concept you know come together into your heads? Uh, it came together. It came to the head of our singer, who is a long time fan of the spirit mm -hmm. and has a great passion about it. He does the war archaeology for more than fifteen years mm -hmm. so far, and uh, it was just. A a will to combine two biggest passions in life, uh, a work history and the music. And do you guys intend to stick with this idea for the future records? Because on one hand, on one hand, you are known for that. And of course, you know, it, uh, it gives a little room to wiggle and you have created a, a, a fan base around that topic, yet at the same time, it might be a little bit challenging and limiting, you know, to write only about this, I assume, or or you think there's there's plenty to go about that? Uh, this is such a huge topic, like from my point of view, you can write 20 albums about it, and it wouldn't be enough. So no problems at all mm -hmm. to keep it as a main theme. Yep. But no problems at all. All right. And do you guys plan on, you know, obviously, obviously the songs range in both, you know, the variety of music and lyrics, but do you guys ever plan on including more of Ukrainian language songs or or this is not something that you guys will concentrate on? Uh, we are thinking about it because uh, apart from the full length albums, we want to create a different set of releases dedicated to Ukrainian siege riflemen. Mm -hmm. And these songs will probably contain, uh, they will probably be in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. As, as, you, as you might probably heard, when we sing about some French side, we yeah. use French, German, we used Belgian uh, language, we used 
Oh, yeah, a couple more, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I would definitely have plans to like look at this side more in the future. Awesome, awesome. And Vitaly, do you, I mean, is there one track from this record which you absolutely cannot wait to play live? Or it's like choosing a favorite kid? An impossible question to answer. Belgium Armored Division. Really? Why? ACM. Yes, um, probably like my personal highlight from mm -hmm. the album. And I enjoy playing it the most on the band practices. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, all other tracks just go like, uh, one <laughs> one step below. Yeah, <laughs> I I really I really enjoy playing new songs, so I can't wait to play our upcoming show in Kiev. Yeah. So speaking about this, I mean, what what do you guys have in stock for us? What can a nineteen fourteen fan expect at the next uh, you know shows um, you know from the band? You know, people expect something from us, but unfortunately, uh, the club owners doesn't allow to shoot inside. <laughs> they shoot cannons and they shoot guns, so <laughs> everything will get a little bit limited. <laughs> uh, what expect from us a passionate performance? All right. Because because we are we didn't play normally live, but just we we, we just played to. Uh, festival shows this summer after 20 month break, which is disgusting. Yeah. And uh, what we are currently doing, we are preparing, we are working on uh, how to deliver the stuff in the most powerful way. All right, so, makes sense. I mean, just. I mean, I, I just like you and everyone else, I think at this point is already very, very much fed up with the entire situation. And uh, we all hope that, you know, we will get back to normal, whatever the new normal will be very, very soon. And I just wanted to say that everyone has to do their parts. I mean, at the very least, wash your hands and stop spreading the disease, you know, and do whatever, whatever you're told and whatever, whatever will help stop this madness because i personally really really want to go to a metal show because metal lives in clubs and festivals and not really in digital world i think you you th i think you will agree with me on that one absolutely listen people don't get vaccines yeah. don't get vaccinated i got two everything's okay 5g works perfectly i mean this this <laughs> this message is sponsored by bill gates <laughs> <laughs> nah, but kidding. Seriously, guys, go get vaccinated. This is this is ridiculous. Nothing is going to happen to you. No third arms. Nothing. Nothing like that. All right, man. Going back to the music. If you speak about you specifically, and not you know, of course, every band member in nineteen fourteen had a rather extensive history of playing in bands, you know, and uh, just overall in the music industry. So, who are your personal biggest influences and where do you personally dig into inspiration usually you know for moving forward um, i had a very hard working day today and i had like one hour break before giving this interview and i was sitting with just relaxing and thinking about this question mm -hmm. um, it's very, very hard to know as a metal fan as a musician I listen to a shit ton of stuff, like mm -hmm. absolutely a lot. Yeah. And uh, I must say, uh, the, 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 whose whose influence was the most? Uh, definitely Peter Talia. Mm -hmm. uh, Hypocrisy, uh, Asculum Absanum uh, was one of the first albums I had when I, when I was a school kid back in the days. It was like on cassette. Mm -hmm with a terrible quality, probably over recorded a hundred times. Yep. And uh, it's also a Max Cavalera stuff. Mm -hmm. Because the Sepultura, early Sepultura was something that inspired me to go into the heavier stuff. Mm -hmm. I was listening to some Rammstein, System of a Down at that time, and when I discovered Sepultura's roots, uh, this person was completely lost for the society. I started practicing growl vocals and playing guitar, uh, thrashy riffs. And uh, of course, this is like 
I'd say Scandinavian school of death mm-hmm. metal because the most of the, the the most of my Spotify library is Scandinavian bands, different kinds from like death metal to post black mm-hmm. stuff, different different stuff. I see um, that you had also interviewed uh, Mikael Stanne from yep. Death Metal, yeah, which is my long time favorite band. I love Mikael, yeah. Is he, and he's also a great guy. In addition to being a great influence on you know on me as a as a musician, as a show host, a host as on you and I, I assume on thousands of other guys around the globe. I know. Uh, he, he, I know because we met and we talked. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, he's coming to Kiev hopefully in a couple of and, weeks. And to Lviv. Yeah, well. and to Lviv. Yeah, and, yeah. They added the show as well. I hope. hope. <laughs> Like, I hope we will just have two weeks of this uh, long quarantine because the show is intended to be on uh, end of yeah. November. Same. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Everything is going to get to normal. Once again, do your job and uh, freaking help us get there. Help us get there, guys. And, uh, you know, since, since we were talking about Mikhail Stane and uh, Paradise Lost, with whom you guys, uh, you know, obviously uh, played, if there will be one band who could not say no to you, to play with you on stage, with whom you could go on, on road, who would that be and why? Uh, about the active bands or... Uh, well, let's make it interesting and make it out of anyone. <laughs> make it out of anyone. <laughs> uh, if I was born like 15 years earlier, 20 years early, earlier, I would say Chuck Schuldner's death. Really? Well, that's interesting. A huge inspiration for me as well. Okay, yeah, it's. I I mean I think I think in 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 a way or so you can somehow indirectly hear it in in your today's music and. Uh... Maybe maybe you know when I compose riffs when I compose uh, some songs, and when I go back to the stuff I was listening to twenty years ago. I hear all the death riffs. Mm-hmm. I hear all like our channel riffs in my current music. Like, I was listening to the Machine Head when I was a first uh, grade student uh, yeah. in 2005. Mm-hmm. And this is the year I got my first electric guitar. Mm-hmm. And I was heavily playing stuff I was listening to. I now hear influences of everything. <laughs> so it's possible but uh, very very possible <laughs> awesome awesome so okay, all right so now we got that you were influenced by you know several groups you just mentioned right a, a lot of scandinavian metal you know and you mentioned death metal post black metal but what is your true guilty pleasure in terms of music i mean what do you listen to when no one is 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 around you if it's not metal not metal yep Backstreet Boys, I want to hear it, man. Come on. <laughs> no, no, you won't. You won't hear it. I'm very, uh, I'm very conservative uh-huh. uh, in terms of music. I have to open my Spotify really quick. Oh, I did it uh, a few weeks ago, and I didn't find any uh, sins there. <laughs> uh, I listen to a lot of album sometimes really? because my my kids love their music and my wife loves their music, and um, so if not metal, or uh, often uh, is played in this house. <laughs> that's that's fun. It's okay because my daughters love Aqua. Remember Aqua, yeah. the Barbie girl yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's been blasting here for the past couple of months every day, <laughs> and it turns out that I remember all of the lyrics, <laughs> like literally all. Why? Why do you remember this? <laughs> I have no idea. They were just around when I was, you know, you know, growing up and stuff. <laughs> I have the same question for myself. Why am I remembering this useless stuff? <laughs> exactly. How many kids do you have? I've got two kids. Oh, nice. Boy and a girl? Two boys? A boy and a girl. Older. My girl, uh, she will be 10 years old nice. this spring. And a younger boy is 7 years old. Nice, nice. I have two girls. So, uh, pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. All right, uh, man, the last question, which and this is usually something we close the episode with, and I'd absolutely love to hear it from you. Can you share just one craziest story which happened to you on the road with a band? Uh, I'll exclude the disgusting stories. <laughs> mm, because 
because we had a lot of disgusting stuff. <laughs> the craziest. Mm. Mm. We never was. We were never arrested. So no fun with police. Boring. <laughs> Uh, once I got uh, my car broken down in the middle of the year, so I had to drive back home from Germany at 70 kilometers per hour uh, for 1100 kilometers. <laughs> and it took me like 25 hours to get back home. <laughs> uh, but the most insane, I would say, is do you know how does our microphone stand look like? Yeah. This is the most in rifle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like Jenny, it doesn't shoot. It has all the necessary documents. It has like a microphone stand uh, uh, there. And usually we are inspected on a Polish border mm -hmm. when we cross uh, yeah. the border to Poland to travel. And we like take all of the stuff from the, uh, from the van truck trunk uh, just to be inspected by the Polish mm -hmm. border guys or ladies and I remember it was like the end of the shift mm -hmm. it was like 10 minutes or 5 minutes before the end of the shift <clears throat> and the other guy just wanted to let us through very quick but he didn't want to break the procedure so he had to take a look at every uh, like uh, like open every guitar case open like every drum case everything and when it comes to that last case, last one. So he took a look at the, everything. And he opens that, sees the rifle. What is that? And our singer tells us, it's a microphone stand. And he's like, it's a very strange microphone stand. <laughs> Closes the case and I see in his eyes the message. Please God, not on my ship. <laughs> Only not on my ship. <laughs> and he just let us through. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, was laughing, laughing on the oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm just hearing this story just makes me want to, you know, make sure that, you know, you and all the other bands will hit the road once again very, very soon. And you will guys, you know, get to perform because you have a very extensive tour scheduled, right? For, for the next year. Yes. Yes, it is. All over Europe. And uh, yeah, who's that? Is that, are you doing it solo or are you doing it with anyone? Uh, we are driving solo, but the tour is uh, connected with other bands. Mm -hmm. As you might probably see on the posters. Okay. Some Danish bands. All right. So when is the next, when are you guys going to conquer US? When, when, when is the next US date? Mm, I can't say about the US at the time. If we didn't have a lockdown, we could probably tour US this or next year. Mm -hmm. But uh, everything was delayed, obviously. So, cannot say about the North America or South America, but uh, we still have our stuff to do here in the, in the old world. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I mean, just, just to let you know, there were a bunch of uh, people from the United States who were very much well, you know, asking you to come there again once again when i announce that i'll be speaking to you so hopefully you guys will be able to make it across the pond uh the big pond sometime soon all right thank yeah vitali thank you so much for your time it was a pleasure man so i mean any last message for the fans anything you want to share with them listen uh learn to the history to not repeat the mistakes from the past Exactly, exactly, man. All right, thank you so much. Vitaly Wichowski from 1914. Everyone, just as a reminder, their latest studio album is already out via Napalm um, Records. Make sure you check it out if you haven't before. I am sure that if you are a fan of, you know, heavier side of metal music, you will definitely enjoy it. Vitaly, thank you so much for your time, man, and keep rocking. Thank you, cheers. Yeah. Slava Ukraini. Hello, I'm Slava. <laughs>